us more about <clears throat> the original character of Irma Vep, played by Muzidora, tell us who she was, and then what's so interesting with all the issues that are relevant to the character of Irma Vep, you now have your Irma Vep played by a transgender male female character who's of course extremely convincing as a female in in your film. In fact, if we weren't told that it was a transgender person, I don't think we would know. Can you go back a little bit to the original Irma Vep and, and make these connections? Sure. So, um, the film Les Vampires is actually a serialized film, and it was uh, one of the first films that were created as these serials. So every couple of weeks they dole out you know, another 40 minute, an episode, 40 minutes, and the film in its entirety is 10 episodes. It's called Les Vampires, but it's not a vampire film. It's actually a, cops and a typical early cinema cops and robbers caper, the working class versus the ruling class. And uh, the vampires are, are a gang. They're a scrappy gang of working class people who are out to rob the rich and, and um, you know, take advantage of those who have taken advantage. They're oppressors. So Irma Vep is the only female member of the vampire gang. And she actually doesn't show up until episode three. And what happens throughout the film is she becomes the main character in the film because while the film was being shot, which was during World War I, many of the male actors had to go off to the war. Mm. And it was, so it's almost, uh, be, you know, by default because of the war that Irma that becomes the lead character of the film mm. and therefore um, Musidora, the actress who portrayed her, becomes this early cinematic That's stage superstar. Name, that, that was her stage name. Her real name is Jean Roque. And um, she becomes, at that point in time, a superstar. Irma Vep is the, one of the first, it is the first cinematic vamp in European cinema. At the same time, America had... Um, there so were Ir counterparts. Yeah, but. there were counterparts in America. And... And what I discovered when I went to the Cinémathèque Française to do some research on this project, and they had some uh, papers of Musidora's, there were all these letters written to her by soldiers during World mm. War One, Who saw the film. Who had seen the film, or had even seen her live, or giving a talk. Or probably photos of her. And they had photos of her, and they were talking about how they had painted photos of her on their guns, or on planes, mm -hmm. and they carried pictures of her in battle, and that she was, you know, their guardian angel, and some of them were really erotic and kind of yeah. nasty, too. And, but she was this, she she quickly became this icon. And so her character, so the character of Irma Vep is, she's really kind of becomes the brains of the vampire gang. And the vampires... It's kind of like a secret sect, you know. They're very ritualistic. They wear these black, uh, slinky outfits with black hoods. Now, was that new? Was that costuming, that type of costuming, new to the cinema? Or had... Because I know it's very important in your work, which I want to talk about. But do you know if that... Uh, well... Because it's a particularly sexy, um, provocative, sort of ambisexual, actually, as you say... Uh, costume, in, it seems to have been somewhat of a breakthrough in itself, the costume. Theta Barra was the American fam, uh -huh. which I just... Theta Barra, right, yeah. sure. Um, well, there was a costume, and, and I'm unclear on the dates, Fouillard also did a serial called Phantomos. Yes. And Phantomos had a black hood and was in all black, it was a very similar costume. And I'm, I'm unclear right now which one came first. Mm -hmm. I kind of think Phantomos came first. But even and so, this was, early, this, was, this, was, yeah. this was early expressions of this type of intense focus on the importance and ambiguity and immense possibilities of costuming. 
Exactly. And early cinema is full of amazing costumes. I mean, one of the most incredible costume films is a film also made a little bit later, I think in 1920. Uh, it's a version of Salome made by a Russian dancer named Ala Nazimova who did this incredible costume version of Oscar Wilde's Salome that's just exquisite. So, uh, yeah, so costuming became, is, was, was actually one of the key elements in early cinema because, you know, obviously they were limited by camera movements and fancy editing, but they spared no expense with the costumes yeah. and, and uh, a, a lot of the production design. But also, um, Irma Vett is certainly the prototype Catwoman. That is right, the right. first time we ever see the slinky black cat sure, suit sure. On, a, on a woman. And she... Um, and the thing is, though, her power in the film is not derived from her sexuality. She doesn't flirt her way through the film at all. She's not like a vamp like you think of a film noir vamp who's all about smoking and red lipstick and seducing men. She really barely seduces anyone in this film. Her power is sheer intelligence and grit. She's very grit. She's very much... Um, She's rough around the edges, and she will do whatever it takes to get the job done. And she, she actually um, pretends to be a man at certain points in the film, so she's cross-dressing mm -hmm. as well as wearing her cat suit, as, um, you know, well as pretending to be a maid.